Good morning. Welcome to Dude RV. I sure appreciate you stopping by. And of course you got here just in time. The sun is just now coming up. We've got a, I guess we'll go ahead and do it. It's Friday and it's time for another edition of Friday's Finds. This is all about the RV today. Uh, we've got four products we're gonna be looking at. Be doing some work in in Trudy Thunder, and it's going to be hot. It's, it's going to be like a, a hundred degrees this afternoon. So we're not going to have any power in the coach, which means we got to have some air movement somehow. And that's where our first product comes into play, and that was sent to us by. Millican US, Amazon vendor, of course. Oh, we got some sunshine behind me. Move the, move the table. Sun has come out. It's gonna be hot today. Uh, and, and one of the, when it's hot, you gotta have some air moving. And since I'm gonna be inside the coach, and I'm not gonna have power in the coach. We're coming to that. I'm gonna need some air movement and that's where the air bitation, air bit, biton, bit, air biton, air biton. That is a camping fan, cordless, 200 or 20,000 milliamp battery powered fan. Perfect for tent camping. Working in your RV when you don't have any power. The user's manual. We'll look at that later. Right now we gotta we gotta look at the at the goods. There it is. It's not huge. It also works as a a battery bank. We'll see if we can uh, turn it on. Oh, we got to charge the battery, but we have three different levels of speed, and we can put it on a two hour, four hour, or eight hour timer, or no timer, just leave it on. It's moving, an, it is moving enough air that it, it feels pretty good. It's not too loud either. So this would be great for a tent. You have a, a LED light right up there. So you get a little light in the tent or not. This will be a nice addition to the truck camping kit. But today I'm gonna be using it in the coach. And we can power it with the with an additional battery bank, and I've got a couple of those. So I'll charge it while I'm working. So that, that means I gotta get to work. Ah, I feel so good. All right, so let's, let's move on. Now I have three of the four products here. We're still waiting on the Amazon guy to show up with, with the next one. We have two channel sponsors. So our next channel sponsor is Golden Mates. And that is a 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour LifePo 4 battery. That's why the title says we're going lithium. Let's take a look at this. Now, I'm, I'm not going to cut this battery open. That's not my thing. Uh, I don't take things apart to show you what's inside. As you know. Now, this thing did show up in a, a double box. And I'm really, really surprised. Now, when, when we bought Trudy, we had the desire to get into a lithium ion battery but Trudy came with 
two wet cell. Here, I'll show you. This is what I have to work with. So I have two wet cell lead acid batteries. I'm not going to degrade those. They, they have served their purpose. But I don't think it's a good match for the setup because we have a residential 110 powered refrigerator that's operated through an inverter. And with those two wet cell batteries, we have technically they're 100 amp hours each. And when you combine the, you, you, when you connect them in series, you go from a six volt to a 12 volt battery. So on paper, we have a 200 amp wet cell battery bank. But with wet cell batteries, you don't have 100 amps. So on a 200 amp hour wet cell battery bank, you don't want to use that below, they, you know, some people say 50%. Some of the data shows really at 70%, you, you don't want to go below that because you start degrading the quality of the battery. And since they're wet cell, they require maintenance, meaning I've got to check that, add water to the battery. And you see how tight that compartment is. It's not a not an easy task. They wear out faster. If you're if you're using your your battery bank on a regular basis, you've got to you got to make sure that charge doesn't drop below 50%, 60%, what whatever percentage you choose to believe before you've got to recharge it. So with our residential refrigerator and our inverter, we actually we get about an hour bef before the generator, the auto gen start kicks on and, and charges the battery. Now during the day, it's not a problem. We've got a 100 amp hour solar panel that recharges and it, that seems to provide just enough for the air conditioner, for the refrigerator. At night, it's a totally different story. Uh, I've, I've camped out at the land a couple of times and you have to set that auto gen start to make sure the battery is recharged, otherwise you ruin the batteries and that thing kicks on every every hour. So, we need a better solution. Since I have a 200 amp hour wet cell battery bank, and if we go with the 50%, that means I have 100 amps usable before I have to recharge. Well, Golden Mate has reached out, they're a new battery, on the market, I think they're new. Uh, I've watched a video where a guy tore this thing apart and, he, and he, he, apparently he takes apart a lot of batteries. And what he found inside the Golden Mate, he, he had nothing really bad to say about it. As far as my application, he said this is a pretty good battery. So what I'm gonna do is switch Trudy over to lithium ion. And that's a little more involved than just taking out a battery and putting in a battery. There's two other components that I'll have to replace in the process. And the first one of those is in this, oh, let's, before we move on to opening that box, let's finish unpacking this. So this is 1,280 watt hours. So it's a 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour battery. It doesn't weigh a whole lot. I mean, I can pick it up with one hand. It's probably about 30 pounds. Now, one of the things that the uh, reviewer that I saw, one of the things he commented on was this actually, this case is held together with screws so he didn't have to cut it open. I'm not gonna be going inside it, but we are going to replace that that with that and it it should fit in that battery right i actually should be able to fit four of these in there uh, but we're going to start with the one before we go to four and to do that before we put the one in we've got to think about charging this battery 
lead acid batteries charge different than lithium ion batteries and every motorhome and uh, most of your RVs have a, a charging system and in Trudy Thunder we have a converter that converts the AC shore power into DC power but it is not configured for a lithium ion battery it is strictly for lead acid and that can it, that won't fully charge the lithium ion battery so step number one is we've got to change out the converter and go to one that is that is lithium ion compatible and this is the WF 955 AD. We've got a, a, a 55 already installed. It's a 55 amp. This one automatically recognizes lithium ion and lead acid batteries. So it's a it's dual chemistry friendly. It automatically adjusts the profile. So step number one is for me to get in here and change out the converter so i got to get in there and, and and let me show you where that's located here's what we have to work with and where we have to do it this is under the master in this box right down here <laughs> hold on this box is what we've got to first and foremost we got to get out. Well, I'm down here, I, I have found that we've got a, a loose connection here. Or not a loose connection, but screws have popped out. So i got to reattach that and figure out how to pull that out without making too big of a mess. And with, with it being so tight in there, I'm not going to try to record that. I'm just going to do it. Uh, and once I get it out, we'll put them side by side and talk about it. I had a bigger challenge figuring out which, which driver I needed to, to back out the deck screws than I did taking the thing out. But here we are, side by side. This is what came in, in the coach. Uh, if you'll notice here, its output is 13.6 volt DC 55 amp. On this one... First off, let's go on the side. Auto detect, intelligent battery detection. And then here it shows 13.6 volt DC, 55 amp LA, liquid acid, 14.6 volt DC, 50 amp LI, lithium ion. Connections are the same. So we have the ground bus and positive and negative. It's plug and play. So I'm gonna go plug this back in and then we'll move on to step number two. So the next thing I've got to do is see if I can get some kind of organization with this spaghetti bowl of wires. <laughs> that's, a, that's a little bit of a mess right there. Yes, it is. Man, you just got to love them Texas summers when it's just, just hot, but I got lots of wind blowing. If you decide to undertake this kind of project, always, always disconnect all your batteries. So there's two up here. And we're gonna be talking about that again here when that third item, that third part shows up. But I've moved a lot of those cables out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out these two heavy batteries and go ahead and slip in the new and judging by my measurements i think i can actually fit four of these in there or four batteries of this size we'll see once i get it in that's a heavy battery you don't believe me I'm talking about the, the lead acid battery here. Ah. 61 pounds. 
that means we're 122 point something pounds total on on the current battery bank so here's here's what we're switching over to ah. I can do that with one hand <laughs> 25.6 25 pounds to give me the same 100, 100 amp hours. All right, configuration's a little different. So this is 12, like 13 total versus 10. And then these, the lead acid is seven and a quarter and we're seven wide on on the gold mate i gotta go get the other one out batteries installed getting the two out was a whole lot harder than putting the one in plenty of room for at least three more i mentioned this before we have a hundred amp solar hold on we have a go power 100 amp solar or we have a 100 amp panel and the go power this charge controller will handle up to 200 uh 200 amps or 200 watts of solar so i did have to go in and change that to the, the lipo 4 because it was set for the lead acid now the inverter should automatically configure well amazon didn't show up until late yesterday this is what i was waiting for i forget what it's called uh, it's a lithium battery isolation manager gen 2. this this is not a component that you're going to find on a, a towable rv it's only going to be found on a drivable because we have an electrical system on the chassis that charges so when we're driving down the road or the or the 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 or the chassis is running it's charging both the chassis batteries and the house batteries we already have the isolation manager in place now that is for the lead acid batteries but since our charging profile on the lithium ion batteries is different we have to switch that component out and it, it's pretty straightforward there's just five connections and it matches up with the five connections on that one so we're going to be we'll be wrapping that up shortly and then we'll do a, we'll fire up the whole system i think i failed to mention golden mate batteries have excellent temperature management they have a uh, because lithium ion batteries don't charge well it can actually damage the batteries if you're charging at really high temperatures or really low temperatures they don't do well below freezing that's too, not too much of an issue here but in the event that we're out camping in the I like camping all year round, so we, we might find ourselves camping when it's below freezing. The battery management system will, it, it won't charge when it's freezing or when it's super hot. So it cuts out, it turns off the battery, and then it resets when the temperature is back to normal. Now at some point, if, if we, when we decide to go far and wide, where we have more extreme temperatures i very well i will need to enclose this battery bay uh, that's another reason why i wanted to clean up that that mess of cables you know some of those cables were actually six feet long <laughs> like, like this one that's the drive cable for the hydraulic leveling system that cable it has six feet of slack right here not 
I don't know if there's more slack somewhere else, but it was six feet that I had to coil up. All right, I gotta go to work before it gets hot. Now I have access, better access to all of these fuses that were pretty much inaccessible before. Time to reconnect the chassis batteries and fire that baby up. Well, we're showing both batteries. So that's the house, 14.7. That's the chassis, 14.8. <laughs> I didn't mess anything up. <laughs> I did it. 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 Thank God I had that fan. Chassis is running. Coach appears to be operating correctly. The solar charger is showing that the battery is full. Turn the inverter on. And there we go. We're working. It, 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 it appears that we're working. And the refrigerator's lit up. All right. <laughs> Success. Now, all that remains is to expand that battery bank, which will be easy now. It's been about four hours since I finished the project and turned the inverter on. We're at thir it's showing 13 volts, which is what it normally reads. Refrigerator is cold. Have 1.8 amps coming in from the solar panel. Battery still showing full. 13.1. Looks like we're good. For now, this powered up edition of Friday's Finds, I'm done. I'd like to give a special shout out of thanks to Golden Mate Batteries for sponsoring part of this video. The little fan was was really awesome. The other two items that came out of my pocket, and I researched that. But I, I really appreciate those companies for making those products. All in, I have invested three hundred and fifty dollars to make this switch. If we were to add the battery cost into that, we would be about eight hundred because the, the battery's just, is almost $500. But as far as lithium ion batteries go, LiPo 4, 100 amp batteries, that's a pretty dang good price. Now there are lower price batteries on the market. I don't know anything about those. I only know about the Golden Mate and the more expensive brands not to be mentioned here. If you found some value in this video, I'd appreciate you giving me that thumbs up. If you have not already, I'd be most honored if you'd consider clicking on the subscribe button. And for those of you who have been following along, Trudy and I appreciate you. Yappy and I appreciate you too. And for my patrons, our and for our patrons, we are most grateful. You guys rock! All right, y'all come back now, you hear?